Oh, that's uh, about Cleros. Oh, that's that's quite a bit. So we did some interesting marketing. So lots of people who um, present at this meetup, and some of you, of course, are building the Web3 ecosystem, right? We are building decentralized freelancing platforms, social media platforms, and all of these platforms that will replace the evil internet we have now for a social internet, if you want. Um, and there's a problem, right? So some of the smart contracts are, are complete and they can be read by machines with no problem. But one of the facts of contracts is that some of them are incomplete. Uh, they require some human intervention because there are problems with imp interpretation, right? So there are disputes in e-commerce, social media, insurance that require some human input to resolve them, right? And this is a big problem for the growth of these platforms because not less than three to five percent of all transactions happening online end up in a dispute. And all these platforms that we are building in the decentralized Web3 ecosystem, they don't have a dispute resolution mechanism which is embedded. So let's imagine Alice, who is an entrepreneur from France, and she hires Bob, who is a developer from you know, Guatemala, to build a website for her. And there is a dispute, right? And she's not going to Guatemala to find a lawyer and sue him. And so um, they need some way to conduct this type of transactions um, in a way that is secure. Um, OK, click the wrong button. <laughs> what is, OK. Uh, oh, this mouse is too sophisticated for me. Okay. Okay. So, how can Cleros help with this? Imagine Alice sends the payment to Bob into a smart contract, and they both agree that if there is a dispute, this is going to be adjudicated by an arbitrator called Cleros, right? So, the dispute starts. And Cleros is a, is a DAO that is going to select a number of jurors who are going to analyze the contract and the product that was delivered. And it will decide something. And in this case, it decides that Alice wins. So the smart contract on which the money was put will reimburse her. OK? Understood for now? Good. So the big question that you might be asking is, OK, how do you select the jurors? OK. This woman is a designer from it's Myanmar, for example, and she wants to make some extra money on the side after, after um, her job. So she wants to be a juror in disputes and Cleros, and she has to, oh man, this is a very hard mouse for me to use. So she has to buy this token called Pinakion, an ERC20 token. Anyone knows where the, names, the name comes from? <laughs> yeah, you go. Kind of sounds like a French word, Pinak. A French? No, it's Greek. You know, the, the juror. <laughs> the, so the Clero system is loosely inspired in how the Greek courts used to work. So they had this token, it was a bronze plague that they uh, used for selecting jurors. So this is the name Pinakion. Um, so this woman is going to send her Pinakion into a court within Cleros. Cleros is made of different courts, each addressing a different type of dispute. And so after lots of people submit a token into Cleros, so the token gives you the right to be randomly drawn to adjudicate disputes into the court where you deposited your token. So lots of people deposit the token to be drawn, and Cleros randomly selects like five jurors for adjudicating the dispute. And these guys are going to analyze the evidence, and they're going to vote who is right about the dispute. All good for now? Good. So how do we create the right incentives for these guys to work honestly? Um, and who is this guy? I'm guessing someone must know him because. Neumann? Who? Here. No. <laughs> maybe, maybe in some years. It's Thomas. Thomas Schelling, game theorist, Nobel Prize in Economics, 2005, uh, because he developed this concept. It's called focal points in this book in the 1960s. 
Um, let's say you have to meet someone in London and you don't know, so you didn't agree where to meet and you have to go to some place to, and to see if the other guy goes to the same place and you meet him. Where, where would you go? Where? Piccadilly Circus. Piccadilly Circus? The rest? At what time? Midday. At midday. Well, when Schelling did this type of exercise with his students in New York, people used to say, OK, Grand Central Station, noon, in the clock. So that's a Schelling point. That's the way people coordinate when they don't communicate to each other, right? Um, and very easy exercise, so you have to select one of the squares, and if you pick the same one of the majority, you get $20. If you don't, then you don't get $20. So what, which one do you choose? Mm. Mm. 6A. Nice. Who else chooses 6A? Right. It sounds like a bit different than the others. So the same exercise with numbers. OK. So you understood shelling points. Right? So let's say you put a number of jurors, see the same evidence, and they are incentivized to vote like the majority in the case. They see the same website and the same agreement that was made. And they need to vote like the others in order to make money. So in this case, our hypothesis is that these guys are going to vote what is the truth about the dispute. OK? Eh? <laughs> and the loser pays the arbitration fees for the jurors who voted coherently. And the guy, remember the token that was put into the court? That token stays locked into the court until the case ends. And the guy who voted different from the others loses the token and it's distributed to the others who voted in the same way. And this creates in each of the agents the incentive to vote honestly on the dispute. You don't believe me? <laughs> OK, very well, good. So this, the way this system is made is for like users who don't vote honestly. What do we mean by no voting honestly? Like, OK, A, B, A, B, I don't care. I don't look at the evidence, so I just vote randomly. So, since you're going to be incoherent with the majority lots of times, you're going to like, start losing your tokens. And that creates a financial loss. And if you take the time to analyze the evidence and vote honestly, then you are more likely to be coherent. And then you're going to make money. I'm guessing you have lots of questions. <laughs> OK. Yes, now you know what? Yeah, here. We want to bribe jurors. Yeah. Right. It's one possible attack. Another issue would be, you know, like racism and sexism. Say, like, if you find out if the jurors are all white and the, you know, there's like they might rule against a black person, for example. There's and you know, how how I mean, you can say that the majority isn't necessarily right. Either there's okay. The vote with the majority. Um, Is that I'm going to put that question in standby, and I'm going to show you what we found empirically, and then I'm going to answer that question when we have more information. But that's a good one. Yeah. So who, who, who formulates the question that the jury has to answer? So there was an agreement between two parties, right? And they said, in case a dispute happens, the jury is going to be asked this question, right? So, so in that the, the case you had where he didn't do his work. And yeah. So the parties made this agreement of you have to do this type of website with these rules. It's a simple like document. Okay, and so this was the product that was delivered, and so that and then okay, there is a disagreement, so this sent to the jurors. Okay, contract, product, who is right? Okay? Yeah. It seems like we're just doing the distribution of this. So couldn't we do this with ETH or, or, or a wrapped version of it? 
Uh, okay, I'm going to answer that when I speak about the appeal system, because about the, the bribe and the question this. One more now, and then let's go. So people are incentivized to go with the majority. Yeah. But the person that raises the objection is effectively the first person, so it's one zero. So people are always incentivized to go with the person who's raising the objection, not the person that's defending. Why? Why is that the incentive? Because they, they're always incentivized to go with the majority. One is the one who makes so the, the, the attacker and there is the defender. Why? Why people don't do know how the others are going to vote, right? Do, so why would the first person to raise an objection is effectively that the first vote? Oh, um, okay, okay. What if I see how the other vote? Okay, yeah. So, um, ad, so there is an appeal system. So let's say you win in this round, um, and because people saw that, and then. You can appeal, and when the appeal starts, so there's going to be another juror, another jury will, that will have twice as many jurors plus one. So even if you win this round, if your vote is overturned in the next round, then you lose your stake anyway. Do you have to stake more for the appeals process? No, so the, there is a new jury that's going to be drawn again. Yeah, so you don't control the next jury. But I'm going, I, I see that lots of the questions go in the same direction, so I'm going to show you what we found. Let me continue a bit more. So this was the theory. Let's speak about the empirical reality of this. And we did the first test. It was called Dodges on Trial. And basically, it was to create a list where people could send images of Dodges. And so each time you submit an image, you had to make a deposit. And in the end, um, the jurors had to decide whether the image you submitted was a dodge or not. And if you submitted lots of dodges images, then you made uh, a small amount of money for each one that was accepted. But the big like, incentive here, if you got to sneak a cut past the jurors, right, then you got 50 it. Which was twelve thousand dollars back then, right? So this started in July 2018, and it worked beautifully. So this is the list images of the that people submitted and that were accepted into the list, um, and these are attempts to <laughs> sneak cats into the list. Like, and people try really like complicated stuff. Look at this one. <laughs> okay. And there were like many submissions, and this created lots of disputes. Like, so how this, how it works? You submit an image. If no one objects the image, it goes to the list. But if I think that the image you submitted um, is not a dodge, I can challenge you and send you to trial, and then the jury is going to decide. Okay, is this a dodge or not? If I win, I get your stake. If you win, you get my deposit. OK? OK, so there were different situations. People trying to uh, bribe the jurors by submitting this type of images, which didn't work. Another bribe attempt that didn't work. Um, pretty interesting situations to see how um, users vote when there is ambiguity in the decision. Let's say you're a juror and you see this image. Like, what would you vote? Is this a dodge or not? No. Uh, no. Good. Yes. Who's, who thinks this is a dodge? <laughs> this is, right. So this, when this was submitted, people voted no. OK, I know this is a dodge, but are the rest going to know this is a dodge? And I have, so depending on how I vote, and so this was, this was rejected, OK? Actually, I, I'm very happy because yesterday I went to the National Gallery, and this image is at the National Gallery. I, I highly recommend this to, to see this. Okay. Okay. Now you're a juror, and you get this image. <laughs> so now it says this is a Doge of Venice. What? Who? Who would vote that this is a Doge? <laughs> like who? Who? You would vote yes. Who would vote yes? Who would vote no? Yes, 
Well, but you don't know. You, you don't know because you vote in each. So wh one argument why you we vote yes. Who, who, you know it is. Because you know it is Dodge. Who would vote no and give me one argument? It's not the we're looking for. No. <laughs> 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 So, this is not. So, this is not in the spirit of, of dodgeness that the exercise was about, right? That was the. Other. So, there were like lots of arguments on our Telegram group about whether this is or isn't a dodge, and what is the right answer? Like, this is a human decision, if this is a dodge or not, right? Because both, there are arguments for both situations. And how, what do you think people voted? Do you think no? Yes. Yes. But there was an appeal. And now we're getting into the appeal part. OK. Yes, one, the guy who um, thinks this is unfair, he can appeal, right? And this is how the appeal system works. You have the first instance trial, and if there is an appeal, there are twice as many jurors plus one. And then if you appeal again, there are twice as many plus one. And then again, twice as many plus one. And then again, and then again. And then if you want to bribe jurors, it's going to cost you each time more, because you have to bribe more than half the jurors. Like, OK, you can bribe two out of three. Try bribing like uh, 501 out of 1,000, right? That's going to be ex more and more expensive for you to, to conduct this attack against the system. And I think that answers one of the questions. <laughs> What's the cost of appealing? Is, uh, is, can you just appeal to that? No. Do you have, so the, co the exact cost depends on the case, and there are different variables. But you have to pay for the arbitration fees of the jurors. So, so it, if you keep pushing, you're going to lose a lot of money in the end. Okay. What's the fee? That depends on the on the case and the dispute. Uh, so what what what, do you, what was it? Uh, it starts from uh, half if yeah. Yeah. and then uh, grows. So it's uh, small enough so it's available for everyone, but it's uh, costly enough so that in the long run you will simply run out of money, and uh, then uh, people can can crowdfund the defense and they can earn the profit by appealing your appeal. So it's very healthy crypto economics. Yeah. You're like the you're like the oh, people who submit a token into the court are drawn randomly from all of those who submit tokens into the court. Right? So the more information do the jurors get? So I, you tell them, for example, at that point, what you see, Doge of whatever, pretty clear, it's Doge. Yeah. But do they get to communicate with each other? So, um, they can communicate with each other. There's nothing that prevents me, um, I'm juror. Okay, okay, I write on Telegram, uh, this is me. And, but in the end, you vote independently. It's hard when there is the moment you to, get to talk to each other if they want to. They could potentially. Uh, if, if, OK, but you have so to you believe. Can, you can, the jurors talk to each other, right? They go and decide together. There is nothing to prevent, but like, you have to believe that it's me who I'm saying I am. And you don't know if it's me, really, right? You, it's only an address on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So who knows who is behind that? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let me move up. <laughs> and then I, I, we go back to it because many of the questions maybe are going to be answered now. OK. So what do you think happened in this case? Remember, that was, uh, it was the yes, Dodge won. There was an appeal. And what do you think happened in the appeal round? Yes or no? This is yes or no question. Yes. <laughs> yes, it went through. OK. And then someone submitted this image. And now you have two variables at play. First, <laughs> is this a dodge in the spirit of dodgeness that you expect this image to be? And second, was this really a dodge in Venice or not? Right? So this one was voted yes. It was appealed. And what happened? It was voted no, right? <laughs> so, and see that this is not very clear cut because there are arguments in both sides. Is this a dodge? Well, it depends on what do you, how do you find a dodge. And when this image came to be submitted, people were starting to talk about jurisprudence. 
OK, the last doge, we accepted it as a doge, even if it was not a dog. So we should accept this one as a doge too, right? Yeah. Is there any doge rules? Did you say yes or no, or can they motivate a bit the uh, decision? They can argument the decision. Uh, to decide, but um, for now it's yes or no. We are doing some cryptoeconomics research to have them, okay, solve problems like, okay, is 75% yes, 25% no, because lots of disputes happen in that way, okay? Okay, and so one day, one guy uh, sends an email to us and he says, uh, man, I um, submitted this image and it's a cut, so you owe me 50 it, because he sends us also this image. <laughs> so, um, like, I reply, yes, it, it could be this, but it could also be this, <laughs> right? So the payout policy said that if you, so the image you had to submit had to be like clearly a cut for you to have the, the 50 ETH, right? So what we, that? huh? Did it say that? Yeah. Okay. So did, what did, you, did we do? So we did an escrow trial with the guy. We put the 50 ETH into an escrow and said, okay, let's, let's the jury make the decision. So <laughs> the question for the jury was, is this clearly a cut? <laughs> Who says this is a clearly a cut? This is clearly a cut? Who says it's not clearly a cut? So the majority says no. I think that this, uh, <coughs> this uh, foot, foot in, the, in the snow. They yeah. the that argument was given by someone to which we replied, yeah, but how do you know it's from this animal and not that someone put <laughs> right the animal? So people discussed this for a long, long time. And in the end, there is a jury who needs to make a decision, and the decision was no. So we won against the guy. OK, one question now. <laughs> yes? What is the stop of one bad actor holding a lot of the tokens that you need to become chosen as a juror, and then the majority of the What stops that? So a guy buying lots of tokens? Uh, and be oh, attacking the system with 51% attack. Yeah, I, I tried to do that, but so there is an appeal against this, this bribery of, of this type of uh, puppet. And so there is another round, and then I have to have more tokens, and I have to, and there is an appeal, and then I have to have more tokens, I keep attacking, and in the end, when this gets to the final of lots of appeals, I really own like a lot of tokens of the platform, and since the platform was attacked successfully, so no one is going to want those tokens. So the value is going to like, go down a lot, of which I have a lot invested in. So that's why I should not try to do this attack in the first place. And that's why you can't replace this by ETH. Because if you do this attack with ETH, so in the end, there is lots, lots of more demand for ETH. So uh, this system for, the, for defense wouldn't work. And this answers another question. Yeah. So if so the first ruling, if they, each ruling the jurors get paid, so if, say you have the first ruling is accepted, yeah. it's an appeal and it's rejected, but do the jurors in the first round get paid? They are paid after the session ends, all of the session Only ends. At the very end. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they get paid the ETH, the half ETH, the half ETH for the appeal. Yeah. They get paid there, the jurors. So the jurors get paid an arbitration fee that is predefined. And then if there is some juror who votes incoherently, so the, the token that this juror uh, staked is lost. So where does the half eat go? The heart, the, the eat that is, it, it, it's, the so it the loser of the dispute had a staked money there, and this money is distributed to the jurors who voted coherently. The loser pays for the trial. Okay, that's for the money. <laughs> yeah. If, if you need to um, buy tokens with Ether in order to become a juror, aren't you going to get a self-selecting bunch of geeks with all their prejudices being the jurors instead of a, a sort of? Uh, you mean because all of the all of the people who are going to be jurors are going to be like uh, Ethereum no, geeks? Yeah. 
which is, I don't know, but in, in the first instance for now, uh, this is targeted mostly at crypto, already crypto people, right? I'm going to speak a bit more about this, but um, in the I'm end... I'm thinking in the example with the, the coder and the employer, yeah. you know, we might naturally side with the coder, you know, you could, who knows? Why, why do you think that's what you would say to the coder? Well, I'm just saying, there are possible biases, and that might be one. I'm not saying it would be the case, but there may be biases in that self-selecting group. But uh, that's, that's an assumption that, yeah, you don't know. Like, um, but you don't know it's not true, do you? No, no, well, but that, that's why we test this type, this type of things. And for now, we have not found that. For, everything I saw, I've shown you for now, I wouldn't, maybe you were not fully convinced that the Venetian Doge should count as a Doge, but you would see the other party perspective, right? So it's not that this is egregiously wrong. You, in no, no case that happened. There were arguments in both sides. And this is natural because like human disputes have this interpretation nature and that's not an objective answer so i would agree that this is not working if you would see a cut clearly a cut that was accepted into the list but that didn't happen in all of the testing we have done now and we didn't find any type of bias of that sort we may find that in the future and that's something to to solve this is really early stage technology let me move forward a bit more and then i, I answer your question <laughs> okay let me tell you a bit more about how this is used in the real world. That's as Doge is school. Um, so you have like token exchanges, and they have to make the decision of which tokens to accept into the platform. And now this is a centralized process, which some would argue is not very transparent. Um, so can we put the vetting process into the hands of the community? So we try to do this with the decentralized token curated registry that is basically a procedure where the community will decide which tokens to accept into the list for the exchange based on a number of rules and that is how it works so this woman wants her token into the exchange she submits the token with a deposit and uh, if the token complies with the rules no one challenges the token and it's accepted and she gets back the deposit let's say now she submits this token which doesn't comply with the rules, or this guy thinks it doesn't comply, so he challenges the token with another deposit, and this goes to trial, and a number of jurors are going to, okay, this was the token submitted, these were the rules for the token to be accepted. What happens, okay, they say this doesn't comply, so the guy gets her deposit. Wait, wait, let me, <laughs> and so let me show you a, a bit of the cases we have. Like, this platform is called Barchain. And they submitted the token, um, and uh, they, so a number of rules, there are different rules. One of the rules was that the team should have like, a, um, should be legit team. Uh, and so some of, the, some of the people from the community, so they read into the white paper, so this, that the CTO, this guy, was part of some Oxford blockchain group. And they called to Oxford, to ask if this guy was part of the Oxford blockchain group. And apparently, um, there was not such thing as a blockchain Oxford, uh, Oxford blockchain group. And then they found that the social media profiles of the CTO was not compatible with what one would expect from like an important project. And then they found some like fake social media profile. So, and this was all the community doing the due diligence on the token. And this token was rejected. Right. Another case was the Grid Plus case, which is a project I really like. But there was one of the rules for being accepted into the list is that the code audit had to be done by a neutral third party. And the thing is that the people who did the code audit for Grid Plus was Consensus, which is the owner <laughs> of Grid Plus. So someone challenged Grid Plus on the grounds that it doesn't, didn't comply with the third party auditing. Which doesn't say anything about if Grid Plus is or isn't a good project. I think it's a great project, but it just didn't comply with the rules. And the community found that. And so some people saw that there was a business model here. Like if you take the time for analyzing the submissions that people make 
and you discover those that don't comply with the rules and you challenge them, then if you have good grounds on your, on your challenge, then you keep the deposit of the submitter, which in this case was 25 ETH. So these guys became professional challengers. So they, so they challenged the, the, the um, submission and then they produced a report, like a very careful written PDF report that you would expect from a consulting company or a law firm saying, so these are the reasons why we believe that this um, token should not be accepted into the list. And this is like the first decentralized <laughs> law firm. So this is still an early stage, of course, um, but it has solved quite some cases, right? Uh, and it seems, to, um, it seems to work for now. Like in the first iterations we're doing, we, we, we think that it's reaching the right decisions. Um, and let me tell you a bit more about the type of use cases that Kleros can, can work in. Basically, Kleros is made of two parts. So this part is the court, where the jurors work uh, and solve disputes. And this part is where disputes are generated. So one of the type of use cases is the token registries. It's like kind of the DOGE uh, and the tokens uh, trials. So there is a dispute here. It's sent to Kleros, and Kleros sends back the decision. Another one is escrow, and another one is oracle. These are the three main use cases. So the court, this is a bit like what it looks like. This is where jurors stake the token and, the, and where they vote. So this is a staking token. I, the guy is taking token into a court. Uh, so this is how much you have to stake and etc. cetera. Metamask, et cetera. So escrow use cases, we have now uh, escrow.cleros.io. If you want to make a transaction with someone, uh, like a contractor, you can send the money to a escrow, and if there is a dispute, it's going to Cleros. We use this for our contractors, right? We pay it through this. Uh, this is an app that we created for people to create the disputes they want, and they are going to go to Cleros for arbitration. Uh, Linguo is a escrow type of app especially focused for translation. If you want to hire a translator and you don't know if this guy is going to do a good job or not, you can do it through this. This is not released yet. It's going to be in a while. So token registry, we already discussed this one. Um, you know Uniswap? So we forked Uniswap and created uh, what we call Uniswap Ninja. It's exactly like Uniswap, but it only has the tokens that were accepted into a token registry, right? So it pulls the tokens from there. Uh, so, but use it because it's like Uniswap. And there is another badge, it's called DutchX, so for community to vet uh, tokens that go into DutchX exchange. Uh, we are developing a DAP where you can create your own token registry. So I discussed the token case, but this can be used to curate social media contents. This can be used to curate e-commerce listings, whatever. Um, soon you will be able to do it yourself with this token registry. Vitalik, in his, um, that was in it, it New York, said, Oi, why don't you use Kleros to create a registry of humans? So, right? Because you, you need to decide if some user is a human or not. This can prevent civil attacks, etc. So we started a project called Proof of Humanity. It's a list of curated humans. Uh, and if you are interested in this kind, kind of use cases, then uh, there is this very cool Telegram group where there is lots of people discussing this kind of, I think Makoto is in the group, right? Yeah, yeah Makoto is in the group. So um, join the group if you like the kind of identity stuff. And then I'm going to do this fast because they're going to kick me out of the place. Uh, you can use Kleros uh, for solving like kind of Oracle disputes. This thing happened or didn't happen. We developed um, uh, DAP with real issue where you can use Kleros as arbitrator for Oracle type of disputes. So the vision of Kleros is to create this DAO where all of the decentralized ecosystem DAOs, the like e-commerce, uh, social media, sharing, economy, whatever, send their disputes and Kleros sends back the decision to those disputes, right? It's kind of an aggregator of dispute resolution. So the ecosystem is starting now. We have like not many um, DAPs 
connected, but it's starting to grow. And this is our vision of, OK, all of these projects sending these disputes to Claros. And uh, so um, yeah, that's where we, we go. About the team, so it's two founders, myself from Argentina and Clement for, from France. Uh, the company is in France uh, formally, uh, but the team is everywhere. Like we have people in Scotland, Brazil, uh, Canada. Well, you see the flags. Um, so, if you want to, to get involved in what we are doing, so join the community. Of course, you feel free to take a picture of this if you use Telegram. Uh, so, um, if you uh, want to learn more, a very good way to start is by reading our book. I don't know where it is. Oh, let me just. I'm going to shill you the book instead of shilling you a token. So this is the book. This explains our vision and what we are doing and etc. All the questions you ask about crypto economics and stuff, it's answered here. Uh, I just have one in physical format, but the rest is you can download it. And like I signed it digitally with my. <laughs> <laughs> so there is the book. If you want to be a juror, this is the place for you to like onboard into the um, juror platform. Take these pictures. And of course, I'm going to show you a token because we are now, if you want to be a juror, you will need some tokens. So you can buy them in Uniswap, and you can buy them in the sale that is going on now uh, because uh, we did a first sale in 2018, uh, and now we are doing a second round because we do this responsibly in different rounds as we can show the community that we like, uh, fulfill what we said we would do. And if you are more inclined to academic research, so we have a fellowship program where you can do research about different things involving crypto economics, how this interacts with the law of arbitration, uh, and different questions. So these are some people who are in the fellowship program on these two. So we're opening the next um, cohort next week, probably, or in a couple of weeks. And of course, if you are building a DAP and you need this dispute resolution, so talk to me and let's connect your DAP into Cleros. And so you have that problem solved. You don't need to worry about that anymore. And finally, what we are doing, and I promise this is the last thing. Uh, so uh, we are seeing the evolution of different, uh, so the technology affecting different um, areas. We already know that Wikipedia triumphed. And uh, we know that Bitcoin, so this is the, I'm not going to preach to the core. So Bitcoin is triumphing, it's winning this, uh, in the money world. It's becoming the money of the future. And Claros, we think, is going to become a very important part of the dispute resolution ecosystem of the future. Of course, you may have lots of doubts. Yeah, the civil attack and the bribing, and how do you know that people are not going to collude into like, looking for the simple answer? People used to say that about Wikipedia, about Wikipedia in the beginning. They say that Bitcoin is not going to become money because it's like, yeah, how you can you trust a centralized computer network for anonymous people? People, of course, are skeptical about what we're doing. For now, like what we tested is working, and we are open to change it what doesn't work. So thank you very much for your time, and thank you also for the Doge. I have time for questions or no? One, one, one question. Yeah. How do you make money? <laughs> because um, the token that you need to use to become a juror, so. Um, He's expecting a token appreciation process. The, the revenue of the company comes from the use of the token. If Claros becomes a global, very important platform for this business solution, and it starts to be used by eBay or yeah. from. So that's going to be, create lots of revenue, yeah. So you don't really have a revenue stream, really? No. no. Do you have your eye on eBay? Hmm? Do you have your eye on eBay? Uh, if, I, what, if I have what, eBay? Are you, what's your do, you have, uh, do you have a plan? Oh, to, it, to have this used in like, uh, so yeah. So for now, like this, the, the goal has been to, to develop the platform, test that it's, it works. And now that it's tested, and we think that at least in a number of use cases it works, the, the goal now is adoption, of course. That, yeah, and we would love to. So why yeah. so do you think first will penetrate the, the digital um, sort of uh, ambiguity or, or legal cases, and then you'll go on to perhaps more analog? Once 
Is that possible? Um, so this is that what it, the question is, what is the lowest friction point? Mm. So this is the lowest friction point is in type of disputes where like the token exchange kind of because people this is already crypto and people are more open to this type of Other yeah yeah exactly in the long run of course we are also developing a infrastructure for people to build companies on top of Kleros that's what, what we call Kleros layer 2 like you want to create a company that sells a service to eBay of the dispute resolution eBay pays you in like fiat and you handle all the process with Kleros, you handle the juror, you handle the sub, et cetera, and then you charge eBay X amount of money per dispute, and you keep kind of coin base of the studio solution if you want. That's the layer two. Why don't you take a fee for each of the like, disputes? What? Why don't you just take a fee for each of the disputes? That's possible that it, it could be done in the future. That, so this is, remember, this is a decentralized platform the community could totally decide to implement fees for disputes. That's not only our, we have been suggested this and the community could vote on this, of course. <laughs> <laughs> there is another project, I think that, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you.